to the 2023 commencement exercises of Raymond Bible Training College. Next, this marks the 49th graduation of Raymond Bible Training College. 
We also want to welcome all those of you that are watching on the very front lines. Means we're so glad that you're with us tonight to celebrate also. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each one of these of Raymond Bible Training College who are being honored here tonight. This night represents a culmination of effort, sacrifice, faithfulness, and determination on the part of these graduates. We thank you not only for the efforts and sacrifices and accomplishments that have marked the past, their paths to this point, but also for the destinies that lie before each one, for the divine purpose that caused them to walk boldly into the future, carrying faithful the light that they have received. We thank you for the training that's been imparted to them, and we rejoice knowing that as they apply what they have received, their lives and the lives of every individual they come in contact with will be changed dramatically. Tonight, these graduates stand before a congregation, but tomorrow they will go forth to reach a generation. They will not go in their own strength or their own wisdom, but in the Holy Ghost's might and power, relying on the greater one who dwells in them. May they ever be mindful that no matter what challenges or circumstances they may face in life, they can indeed do all things through Christ who strengthens them. May each one of them be filled with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. May they walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work. Get ready, world. Here they come. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's stay standing for a time of praise and worship. So are you all ready to worship tonight? Are you ready for what God has for you in your future? Come on. There is a river where goodness flows. There is a fountain that drowns sorrows. There is a nose deeper than fear. The tide is rising.
So Father, you see every heart. The declaration to go where you have called us. To do it in your name. To follow your will. And with our lives, give you glory and honor. Jesus is the name. 
The first time I stood before graduating class from Rama was May of 1975. And they would have all said in this one section, 58 of them. And now 49 years later, from this campus, we have over 29,000 graduates. <laughs> Worldwide, it's a whole lot more than that, about 119,000, I think. From 287 campuses in 54 nations, it's hard to keep the statistics because every school is operating on a different calendar and so therefore uh, some schools are in session and some schools are out of session and some schools are graduating and others are just starting again. But here tonight, let me welcome all of you that have come to celebrate this achievement of this class of 2023. They've worked hard. They've been diligent. And now you, their friends and family, are here to celebrate this great, great time with them. And so once again, welcome everybody. It's an honor some of the people that are here tonight. First, we want to honor one of our board members of Kenneth Hagen Ministries. It's, it's Mr. Steve Yoder over here. Give Steve a big hand clap. Glad to have him with us tonight. He loves us, but he does have a son graduating tonight, so I, I think he loves him a little more than us, but that's all right. We want to honor and uh, uh, express our appreciation to every one of these and you graduating students. We acknowledge all that has come into uh, bringing this day to pass in your life and we thank God for the future that's ahead of you. We want to recognize also all the families and spouses of all of our graduates. Without their support and encouragement, many of our graduates would not be able to participate in this ceremony tonight. And so we thank you that you are here tonight along with these graduates we say thank you we'd like all the family members uh, of the of the graduates that are here tonight would you please stand if you have a family member graduating let's students give them a great big hand clap thank you you may be seated we also want to recognize and thank in the audience those who have faithfully supported Raymond Bible Training College financially over the years. You have made it possible for us to offer the excellent training that these graduates receive at a very affordable cost. And you are our Word Partner Club members. We'd like for all the Word Partner Club members to please stand right now, if you would, please. Thank you very much. Some of several of these students also, Word Partner Club members. We want to recognize the commitment and sacrifice of 27 international F-1 visa uh, graduates here tonight. They represent 13 countries. When I call your country, please stand. Botswana, Brazil, Canada, China, Colombia, Guatemala, Guyana, India, Indonesia, Nigeria, Norway, Vietnam, Zambia. Give them a great big hand clap tonight. Thank you, you may be seated. There's a, amongst our graduates, there are those of our veterans of our armed forces of the United States of America. Raymond Bible Training College is proud to be a premier school with our military. In our class, we're, we have premier ranking. We have been in the top 10 for many, many years now, and uh, we are glad to have 
and be able to have students come and partake of VA benefits as they are able. We would like for all of our veterans, whether you partook of VA benefits or not, amongst our graduates, all of our veterans, please stand of a military here in the United States. Of America. Thank you. You may be seated. We thank you for your service. And as you served this country well, we know you're going to serve the Lord well as also. Also amongst our students are those that help us make every day at Rayma work. And they are, there's, there's three groups of students I want to have stand. First of all, all of our ambassadors are amongst the graduates. You please stand. These are our student representatives that help us to host visitors, do our college weekend. Thank you. You may be seated. All of our student ushers, male and female, would you please stand? They help us usher at our student events, our exaltation. They do an outstanding job. Thank you. You may be seated. And then a group I'm especially proud of because they don't get much thanks for doing this, but they are our classroom monitors. Would you please stand? All of our classroom monitors. Thank you. You may be seated. Without them, we would not be able to have attendance or any of that type of thing. And so we are so thankful for them. Thank God for that. And those of you that are alumni, we no longer have to sign a piece of paper. We don't have to pass it. No one has to collect it. It's not perfect, but it's better than that. I'll tell you that much. All right. Speaking of alumni, the last group I want to recognize, all the alumni that are here, not you amongst you students, I know some of you grad, but all the alumni that are here in our audience, would you please stand? We want to give you a great big welcome. Thank you for coming home be part of this graduation. Thank you for being here. You alumni who are, you are the, you are the heroes and you are the ones that all of these want to become. Thank you for being here tonight. We're so happy that you're here. At this time, we're going to have some special music ministry, Raymond School of Worship amongst others at this time.
but who God has in us. And rain came when blue my house was built on you. I'm safe with you. I'm gonna make it. Come on, declare. Tonight, our speaker is Pastor Josh Pennington. He, he and his wife Angie are 1999 graduates of Ramo Bible Training College. Together, they founded More Life Church in New York, Ohio. Josh is a visionary, a spiritual leader with a heart for people and an unwavering desire to inspire those around him to receive all that God has for them. He's been recognized both locally and nationally for organizations for things that he has done in outreach to his community. He has an unyielding dedication to create positive change in the community that he lives in and the community of his church. He's committed to telling everyone that he can about the blessings and the benefits of serving, serving Jesus Christ. Let's give a round, big round, Rama welcome to one of your own that's set where you're sitting, Pastor Josh Pennington. Thank you, 
The scene was Mexico City. The year's 1968. The event was the Summer Olympics Marathon. Long after the winning national anthem had been sung, after all the medals had been awarded, and even after most of the audience in the stands had left the stadium, the marathon runner from Tanzania entered that stadium. At the 19th kilometer, he experienced cramping due to high altitude. The cramping caused him to swerve unexpectedly, and another runner hit him. He took a hard fall, and dislocated his knee, and his shoulder was severely wounded by the fall. But he got up and kept on running. Even though he was in pain and limping as he ran, he entered the stadium a full hour after the victors had entered. And he was the official last place finisher of that race. Reporters and cameras that were remaining ran to the scene as he limped across the finish line and they asked him the question, why did you keep on running after such an injury? And John Stephen Aquari replied, I am a runner from Tanzania. I did not come 5,000 miles to start a race. I came 5,000 miles to finish a race. And in this auditorium tonight, you have 262 faith-filled men and women who came all the way to Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, not to begin their training, but to finish it, and we celebrate them tonight. I would like to first begin by thanking all of the individuals who made preparations behind the scenes to make this celebration possible. Earlier this afternoon, I spent about 20 or 30 minutes just walking around in the auditorium, getting a feel for the room, listening to some music and thinking. And in came a small army of people who began to clean and dust and arrange and move things around. And I think it's very appropriate to acknowledge all of the people that we do not see who served us before we got here so that we could have a great big time together. <laughs> Pastor and Mrs. Hagen, thank you for honoring me and humbling me with this incredible opportunity. I have been unable to forget my first year's orientation address that Pastor Hagen preached in 1997. A powerful address that gave us as students practical rules to live by by clearly establishing a theme for that year. The title of his message was, No Reserve, No Return, and No Regrets. And while I am not inspired nor anointed to the level to preach that subject tonight, I must make mention of it because my life has been painted with the brush strokes of that prophetic word for over 25 years. And more importantly than preaching a powerful address, the thing that matters most to me is that you, Pastor Hagen, didn't just preach this message, but you've modeled it and continued to model it decade after decade, being a man of no reserve, no return, and no regret, and we honor you tonight. Mrs. Hagen, God has used you to fill a spiritual void in my life since my mother has passed away and relocated to heaven. Whenever I'm in a room with you and you're leading us in prayer or leading us in the word, 
God does things in my life that he doesn't do anywhere else on this blue marbled planet or any other environment that I'm ever in. And I'm eternally grateful to you and to your leadership. Dean Gregorich, you're a consistent and constant gatekeeper and protector of the mandate that rests on this world-changing ministry and institution, and we give thanks for you tonight. To the unparalleled faculty and staff, thank you for fulfilling the biblical command of teaching the next generation of gospel preachers with excellence. Y'all have trained another crop of human beings who are going to shake the world and turn it upside down. <laughs> Pastor Craig, Pastor Denise, and to your families, I need to borrow the words of someone much wiser than myself. Your house is a glass menagerie with every life detail on display. You have been selfless, and when others chose selfishness, you chose sacrifice. When you wanted to be stingy, you chose to be generous. You've given up dances, vacations, trips, sporting events, social outings to, de to be a team player for an organization who does not always play by the rules. You have, been, you have seen your parents and grandparents hurt, your family crushed. You have seen the church at its worst and people at their best. I imagine deep down you've wanted to scream, my initials are not PK. <laughs> As you've blazed new trails, those initials have turned into credentials. Pastor's kid isn't who you are. It was simply a training ground from, for where you were going. You have been the first to walk in and the last to leave because even in its dysfunction, you have witnessed too many miracles to walk away. And tonight we honor each of you as well. Thank you. Yeah. Parents, spouses, and honored guests, and most importantly, last but certainly not least, the resilient and courageous class of 2023. Congratulations on your incredible achievement. It is truly an honor to stand before you tonight at my alma mater as we celebrate the culmination of your hard work, dedication, and unwavering faith. For those of you who mo mo may think I've wasted ample time in addressing those that I have, I need you to understand this. Honor is not an empty gesture. It will change the environment of a room. And so if you would, I would like to take as a text tonight Acts chapter 16 and read verses 6 through 10. Now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. Now after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. If you would allow me for a few moments, I'm taking as a subject for each of you that are graduating tonight, they are waiting on you. Imagine with me for a few moments that I'm a time traveler, having come from the future 
to help guide you. Because as someone who's walked a similar path that you're about to embark on, I want to share with you five simple lessons that I've come to learn al along the way. And in the future awaits you, in that future there will be challenges and obstacles, but there will also be victories and breakthroughs. And I want to partner with you for just a few moments in this assignment. And here's my prayer that at some point during this address, someone, I don't need everyone, I just need someone to get stirred up to the point where you begin to vibrate internally with the anticipation and the excitement, almost to the point where you feel like you might want to leave before we're finished because the reality of they are waiting on you hits you. The top five things that people are waiting for you in the future, as I see them, number one, authenticity. The real you is way better than the fake you. God's creative nature doesn't allow for unnecessary redundancies. In other words, He made your life to count and to matter, and you have no one else to be measured against except the man Christ Jesus and the mandate that's been planted on the inside of your heart and soul. The future, I must tell you, is not begging for more karaoke performances. <laughs> God is not asking you to do your best impersonation of the individual that you admire or that you look up to. The future needs the authentic version of you, the one that God designed you to be because the ones that are waiting on you, they're craving the real you. That's who they're waiting for. I made the mistake as I was preparing to ask Pastor Denise for all of the commencement speakers that came before me. I will not tell you their names, but as I read through the list, a song from my past, from Sesame Street, came into my mind. And the lyrics go like this, one of these things just doesn't belong here. One of these things just isn't the same. One of these things just doesn't belong. And you'll be able to figure out which one by the end of this song. <laughs> insecurity began to creep up in my soul. But then something greater than insecurity overtook me and it's called authenticity. And I said to myself, I said, if they wanted someone else to show up, they should have asked someone else. They asked me, and that's the only one that can show up. The Josh that God made is the only one who has permission to give the 49th commencement at this graduation. I'm the only one that can do that. Why am I saying this to you? Because you must be mindful of comparison. Because in the future you will have to deal with the trap of comparison and if you do not deal with comparison, comparison will deal with you. Comparison only leads to one of two things, a sense of inferiority or a sense of superiority. And neither will serve you long term. I will call to your mind the story of David and Goliath. And before going out, Saul offers him his best. And David decides Saul's armor won't fit. I'm here to tell you tonight, Saul's armor might not fit. David's sling might not work. Joseph's coat, it might be too flashy. Elijah's mantle might be too heavy. But Jesus' yoke is easy and his burden is light. You need to understand in this auditorium tonight, you won't be everyone's cup of tea, but you will be someone's double shot of espresso. Hey! 
On the easy days, keep showing up. On the hard days, keep showing up. Just keep showing up with your authentic self and who you are. Now, don't confuse being authentic with being comfortable. Which brings me to my second point. The future is waiting on servant leaders. Leadership is, a, is not about being in charge. Leadership is about serving those in our charge. We were in the middle of a building project and I was in my closet at home praying. I was up against an assignment that I had never faced before. This Rama graduate, man of faith and power, full of nerves, confusion, and did not know what to do. I had in front of me something that was very uncomfortable. And I was pleading with the Lord, Lord, can you get me out of it? I don't want to do it. And my main argument was, I'm uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable. And I don't mean I heard a voice, but I heard these words, comfort is not a prerequisite for obedience. Servant leadership will demand discomfort. In the future, you will face things that make you uncomfortable if you are going to properly serve those that are waiting on you. Resist the temptation to worship comfort. Comfort is overrated. My mom was a single mom who didn't have enough. And she made me go to church. And she was very resourceful. Even when she didn't have a way to church, she figured out how to get us to church. I'm a product of a bus ministry. A man named Glenn drove us to church. He drove us to church as a servant leader. Last week, I did Glenn's funeral. There's no way, there's no way that Glenn could have known 20 years after he picked me up, he was going out to get the pastor of the church that he would attend. He was simply serving, and I was waiting on him to come and get me. They are waiting on you. They are waiting on you. I was in a time of reflection and felt that we were to start a transportation ministry in our church. And a thought came to me, if you don't go get them, who will? And I started to answer the question with the phrase, no one. And in the middle of saying no one, my mind interrupted me and corrected me and said, if you don't get them, I started to say no one will. And then I thought, no, that's not right. Drugs will get them. Abuse will get them, lostness will get them, confusion will get them. They are waiting on you. Stop trying to be a leader and start serving the broken hearts of humanity and watch what God does. The third thing that the people in the future need from you is curiosity. Curiosity fuels discovery. It ignites passion. It drives innovation. It encourages growth. And as you step into the, the field of your choice and the various things that are options for you, embrace the unknown. Question the status quo. Seek out new perspectives. For it is through curiosity that you'll uncover the solutions that the broken heart of humanity is wrestling with. Please stay curious. Don't stay loyal to an old version of yourself. Be curious. I was a little boy playing in the yard and it was a hot summer day and I came inside and I wanted sweet tea. And I asked my mama for some sweet tea and she said, no, I couldn't have any. But I saw on the counter a glass. And I thought, well, I'm gonna have me some sweet tea whether she gives me permission or not. I was curious. I grabbed that glass and began to chug it, only to find out it was not sweet tea, it was bacon grease. (laughs) 
I need you to know the people of the future need your curiosity. Sometimes it will reward you, other times it will punish you. <laughs> Be curious. Fourth, empathy. The future needs your empathy. The world's a diverse and diverse and beautiful tapestry of cultures and perspectives. And as you step into the global arena, remember that empathy is the key to unlocking meaningful, meaningful connections, fostering collaboration. By understanding that the experiences and emotions of others, you'll be a bridge over the divide that will allow you to inspire change, forge paths to a more Christ-centered world. A couple of weeks ago, I was with a group of friends and we were at this place that had a golf simulator. I love golf and we were taking turns hitting in the golf simulator. One of my fellow Raymond graduates, in fact, took his turn in the golf simulator and he, he was hitting the ball poorly and I was loving it. A secret pastime of mine is to grow over the misfortunes of others that I'm friends with. <laughs> Sorry. He hit this ball, and as soon as he hit the ball, he hit the deck, and I, he, he fell to the ground like he'd been shot. I started laughing. Empathy. <laughs> well, that isn't it. He stood up. And he said, no, guys, I'm seriously hurt. And he pulled his hands away. The ball had hit a piece of cross iron, ricocheted back and hit him right in between the eyes. When he moved his hands away, he was a fountain of blood out of his forehead. I need help, he said. I went running to where the group of people were that could help us. And I said, hey, I need some help. No one responded. I said, hey, I need some help. Finally, I was getting a little frustrated and there was an urgent need. I said, hey, we need some help. We need some medical attention. And an EMT came running. When we go back to the text of the man that Paul sees in the vision, and he says, come over to Macedonia and help us. In my imagination, that, that man was not saying, He wasn't saying, hey, if you got a minute, can you come help us? He was saying, at all costs, do whatever you can do. Come and help us. Graduating class of 2023, they are waiting on you. They are waiting on you, and in the future, you will need to answer the panicked cry with empathy. You will have to learn to love people that you know are going to leave you. Everyone that starts with you will not finish with you. You have to learn how to be spiritual foster parents. Empathy for me is contained in this phrase. Learn to be in their shoes, not in their face. Lastly is the value of patience. Value process over events. The future is looking for people who will be patient. I recall your memory to when they were marching around the walls of Jericho. Why seven times? Why not one? Wasn't God the same on the first lap as he was on the seventh? Couldn't he have just saved him, saved him some cardio? I don't know all of the reasons why I'm not wise enough to know, but I know this. I've shouted during events, but the walls come down when I practice the process when I'm patient, because every promise has a process. And it's through faith and patience that we inherit the promises. In 2007, we set out as a church to acquire our very first 
permanent location. We had went to an auction and were the highest bidders at the auction, but it was the sale of a local school, and so the school district had to approve the contract. So we went to the school board meeting, and our agenda item came up, and we were spoken for and represented, and they adjourned to break and discuss it. During the break, a distinguished man came to me, his name is Bill, and Bill said, Josh, can I tell you a story? I said, sure, I want to relay that story to you. He said, what I'm about to tell you is not rumor, conjecture, or hearsay. I was in the room when the conversation happened. I can tell you for a fact, in 1997, a very successful businessman in our community offered to buy this school and relocate the school by building them a brand new building. And the school district said no. He said, I think that's an interesting bit of history that you ought to know while they are deliberating. And as soon as Bill finished that story, I was able to make the connection. You see, in 1997, my wife and I were married and made the decision that we were coming to Rama Bible Training College to give our life to him a decade earlier. And what I knew was God, when we made the decision and said yes to his plan for our life, he set in motion things in our future that only he could do. And he held that place in reserve for us because it's, it was in his plan for us to be there. We're there, we're on our third building project, whatever. Here's what I came to tell you, that when you said yes to this moment, God started moving things for you. And even though you don't see it yet, He's moving behind the scenes and it will be there at the right place at the right time because here's what I know, God never fails. He never fails. As I look out at this sea of bright and eager faces, I see a future filled with limitless potential. You have the power to shape the world, to create a legacy in positive change, to leave an indelible mark on the lives of the people that you serve. They are waiting on you. They're waiting on you to lead. They're waiting on you to innovate. They're waiting on you to inspire. They're waiting on you to make a difference. So as you walk across this stage and into the next chapter of your life, remember this, the world is waiting with bated breath lean into authenticity be a servant leader cultivate curiosity demonstrate empathy practice patience and seize every opportunity that lies ahead of you because in front of me I see a group of people that are going to answer the call and as you do the Spirit of God is going to empower you to preach the gospel heal the sick cleanse the leper raise the dead remove burdens destroy yokes recover sight to the blind heal the brokenhearted bind up up their wounds, proclaim liberty to the captives, and turn this world upside down. <laughs> Class of 2023, will you please stand on your feet with me for just a moment if you're able. This is what I want to ask you to do before we're finished. Two things. I want us to take 60 seconds, and I want you to grab the hand of the soon-to-be graduate next to you. And because I know this is a house of prayer and we have a culture of believing God, I want to ask you to do something because I know you are prayers. For the next 60 seconds, I want you to pray for your neighbor. But here's what I want you to pray for them. I want you to pray something very specific. I want you to pray that whatever you've been believing God to do in your life, that they do it in your neighbor's life first. You need direction. You, you need resources. You need clarity. You need, you need, you need. Get out of the way because what I need you to understand is it is impossible to be jealous and envious over someone that you're believing God with. So for the next 60 seconds, I want you, class of 2023, to lift up your voice and ask God to do for your fellow graduate first. Go. Go, go. Lift up your voice. I know you can do it. Go.
Yes. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> right now, shout amen. amen. Let go of their hand, and I want you to do one last thing before I get out of your way. Look as far over your left shoulder as you possibly can. All the way over. Now look over your right shoulder as far as you can. Let that be the last time you ever look back except to remember the faithfulness of God. They're waiting on you. You may be seated. Thank you, Josh. I don't know what happened back there in 1999, but something happened. Tony, Jeff, I don't know what happened. I know in 1984 God did something because Marvin and I, where's Marvin? We've been around here for a while. 1999, 2023. I don't know. They're out there. That was outstanding. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord one more big shout concerning what you said. Hallelujah. Before I present the graduating class of 2023, I want to draw your attention to two tables you can see situated on the platform. You'll notice that these tables do not contain the traditional diploma covers, but instead there are red and silver relay batons. The red batons will be given to our second year graduates, the silver batons to those in our advanced studies programs. Let me reassure you that all the graduates and to all you graduates and parents and family and friends that each graduate will receive the, their diploma upstairs immediately following the ceremony tonight. The reason that we give these batons uh, at our graduation is due to a message that was preached at the 2002 orientation by our president, Kenneth W. Hagan. He delivered to the student body this message where he traced the history of revival down through every generation and challenged each student to carry the baton of revival to this, to this present generation. Every year we still show the recording of that message and every year it has the exact same effect as students race to the platform and to the altar to dedicate themselves to this cause. This evening, each, each graduate will come to the platform. They'll receive a baton, this baton, symbolizing their commitment to take their place in the end time revival and to carry the message they've received at Rhema to their generation. The inscription on the baton reads, I commit today to carry the baton of revival to this generation. I will carry the banner of faith and God's power to a lost and dying world. This is my time to do all God has called me to do. At this time, I want to ask the entire 2023 second year graduating class of Raymond Bible Training College to please stand. It is now my privilege to present to President Kenneth W. Hagan and Director Lynette Hagan the, this second year graduating class of 2023 comprised of 149 students. These students have completed Raymond's ministerial training course and have complied with all the requirements necessary for this honor. We thus bestow upon them the privileges and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Will the second year graduates please be seated. At this time, we do have two students who are unable to negotiate the stairs to the platform. We have second year student Brooke Marie Shelton and then uh, biblical studies student Lester Niarenda who cannot come to the platform, but our president, Kenneth W. Hagan, will present their baton to them at this time. Do you know which ones they are? I know.
Will the first two rows of the graduating second year students please stand and come forward at this time to receive your batons. Now every year I am obligated to ask that everyone please hold their applause and their shouts and cheers until all of them have been called, but no one ever listens to that, but I have said it, so there you go. Janet Engo. Tamara Marie Buck. Elias Nephi Quintana. Michelle Coleman. Rhonda Lee Sharp. Larry J. Hansen. Simone Anne Marie Biput. Stephen L. Lazuri. Orain Warner Talbert Bithut. Selena Tayez Quezada. Michael David Seiler. <laughs> Caleb Joseph Hutchison. Naomi John Mushi. Where was Jeremy? I didn't see. Anna Martha Where? Lib. Carmen Lisa Perez. Yang Yi Wu. Kendall and Luis Taylor. Diego Samuel Gullion. Idali Vasquez. Linesh Thomas Daniel. Pa Mu Win. Jake Welsh Kavanaugh. Lermo Livingstone Nart. Haley Ann DeVlimming. Bella Tershasa. Catherine Lynn Carmack. Shannon L. Porterfield. Rhonda K. Hood. Heather Ann Yelverton. Billy Dwayne Carter. Eudora Christine Perrara. Corinne Marie Crawley. Sing Don Nem. Sean Michael Crawley. Paul Ray Yi. Shirley Ann Flournoy. Kalpana Tameng. Kelly Jean Barnett. Aaron Michael Rigsby. Yin Yin. Justin Ryan McNabb. Yulia A. Fellers. Sean D. Yuri. Nathaniel Scott Shelton. Brody Abram Wallen. Chunli Li. Sandra Lee Swanson. Kelly Ann Copley. Teresa Ray Wagoner. Sharnisha Denise Brown. Jennifer Marie Shelton. Rita Faye Carter. Brianna Elizabeth McDowell. Laura Jaka. Richard Loy McDowell. Hannah Joelle Baker. Kylie Crystal Rose. Nami Bimba. Chelsea Moray Taylor. Josiah Aiden Ansis. Bailey S. Patterson. Kasten Slade Appleton. Yvette V. Taylor. Xavier Viernes Blesno. Theodore Josiah Tinjum. Olivia Ann Crustina. Solomon David Zanstra. Virginia Eve Laird. 
Nathan Wayne Petty. Abigail Lana Johnson. Olawashagun Karade Olawawunme. Madison Lynn Cowell. Jonathan Maxwell Petty. Mariah Danielle Cassie. Casey. Pedro Israel Orta. Louis O. Gomes. Kristen Marciale. Vincent Edison Banks. Benjamin David Russo. Ephraim Nin. Saruz Sitola. NSL Swamno. Nathaniel Asher Schaefer. Sunday G. Ezema. Jared Timothy Sowers. Karan Kavala Morali. Isabella Nicole Salazar. Michael Robert Cesario. Noah James Phillips. Barry Robert Landon. Adam Joseph Sherrill. Zachary James Garcilaso. Brandon Todd Mizek. Naomi Hooks. Caden Andrew Sukup. Jaden Gregory Hurd. Joel Apolinar Ruiz. Noah David Garcia Alfon. Zachary Isaac Sisk. Zachary Stanton Kilpatrick. Nicole R. Monroe. Salvador Duarte. Christopher Joel Mugliston. Stephen Richard Bussinger. David S. Velasco. Miles Everett Kibber Kibby. Grace Marie Naradowski. George Baikai Kune. Kevin J. Stevens. Michael Jeremy Case. Felix Regele. Rachel Ann Cook. Jude Malachi Morgan. Christine Marie Brining. Dean Richards Yida. Kara Melinda Craver Jones. Leah McDonald. McKenna J. Laume Ek Tuwa. Gary Joe Major II. Peyton R. Lome Ek Tuwa. Christian Roberto Medina Wagner. Justin Tate Like. Benjamin Asher Persinger. Dylan Randall Lizenby. Bimbi Pierre. Israel Mark Blakely. Jacob Tanner Zirkel. Rachel V. Ashcraft. Thangs Yang Muang. Brianna Island Dyer. Olivia Renee Merritt. Tisha Boyd. Tori Leanne Scott. Jonathan J. Lord. Jasmine Reese Pruitt. Ricardo Andrew Gavinet. Gabriel Isaac Pishka. Seth Daniel Haas. Sean David Messick. Gabriel Ashton Bailey. Coyle Lloyd Forrester. Cody James Forrester. 
Michael Jeffrey Erlmeyer. David Nathaniel Lanier. Emmanuel Fiafia Yalu. In 1999, Ramus started its first advanced third-year program. There are, now, there are now seven programs available that provide intensive ministerial training. These programs are identified by the different colored stoles that our graduates are wearing this evening, those with the black robes on. The programs and colors are identified as follows, and as I name your program, please stand and remain standing. Biblical Studies Purple, General Extended Studies White, Itinerant Ministry Gray, Pastoral Ministry Red, Student Ministries Light Blue, Worship Ministry Pink, World Missions Gold. It is now my privilege, privilege to present to President Kenneth W. Hagen and Director Lynette Hagen the Advanced Studies Graduating Class of 2023 comprised of 113 students. These students have completed uh, successfully the program set in front of them with all requirements to fulfill this honor. We bestow upon them the privileges and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Will our advanced studies program students please come forward to receive their batons. Isaac Chabala Guaya Kolawalu Kolapo Malika Walters Emily Marie Jones Israel Jordan Walters Jessica Albor Albor Deborah Jean Fairfield Jacob Daniel Kopp Aiden Warburn Cruz Aiden Michael Worley Felipe Morbeck Oliveira Christiana Hadassah Goodwin Lip Chan NG Edo Chit Naomi Balkaron Raylene Janae Gores Juan Minos Marcus Damian Coleman Victoria GQ DeCobo Lindsay Rose Lara Carrie Jo Medeiros Mika Schneider Marsal Alyssa Lauren Spencer Mirella Schneider Wolf David Allen Kramer Aniti Janodo Ede Yamarai Kate Mauswa Favor Ingwa Sawyer Kenton Weinrich Berta Susanna Renero Cassidy Hope Johnson Telsia V. Agiga Cherie Renee Riojas Martha Ann Mallard Jillian Faith Lanier Esther W. Ngoto Elva Jean Hope Abigail Marie Torres Mary Ann Starr Lisa Nicole Calvert Melanie Lee Morse 
Micah A. Bunch. Blake Kenneth Hagan. Abigail Marie Smewin. Skylar Hagan. Janice Rorisha Hastings. Moises Bello. Gage Michael Monroe. Vanessa Christiane Olivia. Timothy James Mayhill. Deja Janae Toro. Shania Ashley Church. Daniela Alexis Mejia. Jeremy Antonio Valenzuela. Darla Love. Gracie Joanna Utterseer. Stephen Dale Love. Roberto Roberta Denise Johnson. Derek S. Arid Edwards. Amanda Nicole Statka. Obiageli A. Brewer. Vunglap Ingo. Gail Brewer. John D. Holloway. Shirley Ann Everett. Stephen Mark Johnson. Talina Esperanza Infante Mendoza. Vinny Paul Merengue. Maggie Lynn Dickey. Johnny Velasquez. Decentra Hagen. George Rojas. Caleb Elliott Covington. Stacy Joniel Rosado. Joseph Thomas Kepler. Jason Jeremiah Toro. Jeffrey Paul Geither. Michael Ryan Buckley. Kodiak Kashmir Calkins. Noah Abner Yoder. William Michael Roden Wade. Ellen Ruth Schrauger. Caleb Christopher Willis. Thenekop Tuthang. Robert Joseph Young. Abigail Grace Boger. Richard Burton Ewalt III. Grace Hannah Badley. Katrina Lee Ariano. Amanda V. Diggs. Jennifer Leanne Lingren. Jennifer Lynn Pretty. Tanisha Denise Carney Waterton. Camillian Dongo. David Lee Cockleman. Gilson Lercerdo. Eden Karine Gall. Jacob Robert Marthy. Darby Kristen Like. Daryl Preston Holloman. Luis Ruben Cadero. Tony Lynette May. Laura Ann Morris. Gemma G. Jimenez. Ricky Lee Medeiros. Etta Annette Wilkerson. Amethyst Rose Vineyard Crouch. Lewis Charles Appling III.
Will the entire graduating class of 2023 please stand? On behalf of President Kent W. Hagen and Director Lynette Hagen, the board members, all the faculty and staff of Raymond Bible Training College, it is now my privilege and honor to present to you the entire graduating class of 2023. You may now move your tassels. You may be seated. We ask all of our friends and family that are here in the audience to please remain in the arena after the benediction until all of the graduates have left the arena. And then also they will be headed immediately upstairs and so they will be back down shortly. So please do not try to catch them as they go out because they have business to take care of. One, or, one last order of business before they will come back down and we'll be able, you'll be able to see them then. At this time, President Ken W. Hagen will now present the charge to the graduates. As you take this step forward for your future, you've been given a great charge already. But as you walk from this place tonight, I charge you to be true to the things that you've been taught, the things you have learned. You are now ready to embark on the journey that God has for you. I know of no better way to give a charge than to read from God's holy word. <clears throat> Isaiah says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings of good things, who proclaim salvation, who says to Zion, Your God reigns. Then in Romans, Paul says, how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? That is it written, and Paul's going back, getting Isaiah. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Now I want to read from what the Apostle Paul has to say in 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Because many of you will go into one of the five-fold ministry gifts. But when many of you will be in ministry of helps. And you might say ministry of helps, yes. That's working a regular job but ministering in the ministry of help by giving of your time and your talents to your local church. Many of you may enter the workforce, the business field. But you see, God puts you there so you can be in the ministry of helps by helping support the church and missions and other endeavors that God would have you to put your finances in. Here Paul says, and God appointed these in the church, first apostles, second the prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings. Now there's your ministry gifts, but look at this, helps, administrations, Varieties of tongues, helps administration, administrations. You see, it takes the minister behind the pulpit, but it takes the minister 
in the ministry of helps to complete the complete plan of God. In, in Timothy, Paul is writing, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit those to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. <clears throat> Excuse me. You therefore must endure hardships as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And furthermore, Paul writes to Timothy, flee youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace. Those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart, but avoid foolishness and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle in all, able to teach and patient. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is prof profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For their time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap to themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure affliction, do the work of evangelists, fulfill your ministry. And lastly, he says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Lastly, I leave you with this from Mark's gospel. And he said unto them, go throughout the world and preach the gospel to all mankind. Whoever believes and baptized will be saved and whoever does not believe will be condemned. Believers will given, be given the power to perform miracles. They will drive out demons in my name. They will speak in tongues. They will pick up snakes. If they pick up snakes or drink deadly poison, they will not be harmed. They will place their hands on the sick and they will get well. Tonight, you sit in these classrooms underneath the instructors behind you. You've sat in my classroom and now go forth and fulfill the vision that God has put in your heart because there's no one like you and there's no one that can do what God has asked you to do. God bless you and I pray for you. Let's all, let's all stand for a word of prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this 49th class of Raymond Bible Training College. We thank you, Father, as they are unleashed on this lost and dying world. We thank you that this class of 2023 will take the message of faith to, a, to this generation. We thank you, Father, for equipping them in every area of their life, physically, financially, spiritually, emotionally. We thank you, Father, for revival to this generation. We thank you for signs, wonders, miracles, and healings that they perform. Father God, we just thank you that they'll never forget this night. This great message that Pastor Josh has given them. We thank you, Father, 
that in the times that they feel like quitting, that they will never forget the, pa the words of Pastor Hagen, that they will not be defeated, and they will not quit, Father. Father God, we just thank you for the, the many things that these graduates will do. We just thank you in advance for the testimonies that we shall hear and the testimonies that we shall see. And we thank you, Father, that there's a world out there waiting on them. Father God, we just thank you that as they go th these next few days or few months, we thank you, Father, for giving them protection, giving them strength, for guiding each and every step that they take. We thank you, Father, for everything that they've done. We thank you, Father, for, for their parents and their grandparents that supported them. And we thank you, Father, that the best is yet to come, that they are here today for such a time as this. And you have, you have equipped them and called them to this place at this time. And we just give you all the praise and all the honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So are you ready to sing the school song? Come on, let's sing it out. I'm standing here today in your will divine. I'm reflecting back to a precious time. I was straight so long. 